day one <laughs> and it's my birthday so it's a special day today one the cabin gets started and two like I kind of said <laughs> it's my birthday now ordinary speaking when you get I have a birthday and celebrate it and style and all that kind of stuff well you get cards I got cards I even got a little bit of Lego as well also got some interesting deliveries as well albeit for the cabin so it was all dropped off in the front garden here we go got some shingle there uh, I think there's sharp sand we got here that's quite a bit of it there we've got some more shingle down there as well and that's kind of all protected as well and around here we've got these bricks here old, and I think these are the engineering bricks and they're actually what's going to go on top of the foundations to allow the airflow under the cabin and then over here these are the biggest deliveries of them all is the ballast and of course you need the ballast to create the concrete and of course where that goes is the foundations So once the ballast is mixed with the cement, of course creates concrete, and this is exactly where it's gonna be going here, into the foundations. Now there's still a little bit more foundations uh, to be dug out, but as you can see, it's actually the earth. Uh, we kind of thought it would be quite clay, but actually it's quite flinty. There's, there's a lot of flint stones in there. Uh, there's one there. And there's just a collection of some of them that were pulled out. Uh, I thought I might keep and kind of use it for some sort of gardening thing or something like that going forward I'm not quite sure what but anyway it would kind of kind of be in keeping with the garden and well seeing as I seem to have a source of quite a lot of them I thought I was, thought I might as well keep some of them but yeah like I said it's gonna be roughly 30 centimeters wide and about 60 centimeters deep in fact it has to be slightly deeper over here because like I said before everything's on a hill and you can kind of see the way it kind of rolls off I think there's about I don't know 20 centimeters difference between uh, this end and this end over here so inside the foundations all this area here is kind of still quite grassy and the, the top layer of that is actually going to be taken off but what you want to do is you want to prevent any kind of foliage or shrubbery or anything like that um, kind of growing through up onto the building it will be at the kind of the, the base of the building and what you do for that we also had this delivered today and this has got this fabric here and this fabric you lay over the top of that area and it pretty much stops anything growing through it like weeds uh, maybe even more grass or just anything else but it just stops anything growing through and that protects the bottom or rather the base of the cabin itself so all this earth then has got to go somewhere and I haven't actually got to skip for it so I've got that mound idea they kind of laid the earth I'm saying then we've got this mound and I think that's looking pretty good as well and then over the top of that skimming what was around the foundation area is the grass so then what we do is just water it maybe put some topsoil on it and then just lay the grass on top of it that should hopefully give it kind of a bit of a natural finish but you can see there that's me kind of sitting straight and you can really see how this part of, of the garden just really tails off so that's day one over and done with then it's been a pretty good day in all honesty I mean, it's, it's been a day in more ways than one of laying foundations the guys have been getting all their tools down here to kind of do the job and then of course been taking deliveries of all that material and then of course they've been digging out the foundations themselves and you know, i'd say they're probably like three fifths of the way through doing that it kind of worked the idea of creating the mound down there I think that looks pretty good as well and all in considering the weather's been a bit iffy today it's either been really sunny or really rainy I've actually got quite a lot done so I think for day one on the cabin project I think it's been a pretty good one but anyway like I said this is my birthday so I'm off now to have a nice meal out Looking forward to getting home and seeing how the 
view of London. So this is kind of exciting, I mean, day two, and because I've been in the office, of course, I don't know how they've been getting on or what they've been up to or anything like that, and they're long gone home now. So this is gonna be a bit of a reactionary uh, look at what I think of what they've done today. So we've got a bit of a pathway kicking off because some of the grass is wearing out, but that's understandable, but oh wow, <laughs> this is cool. It's actually starting to look a little bit like a building site. <laughs> Got a load more shingle and underneath here kind of protected under that corex uh we've got ourselves our cement then you mix that with the sand and you get yourself cement and that is exactly what's going to be going down in those foundations and judging by the look of it all the foundations have been dug out so we'll take a look at that in just a second now there's two things that actually make digging out the foundations particularly difficult one are these trees here in particularly <laughs> the big ash as well but also flints flint stones so i'll just pull you around here i'll show you some you know here's your kind of average kind of size flint stone don't think much of that how about this one over here <laughs> this is huge look at that i must have pulled that one out today but that is the king of the flint stones <laughs> I might call him Fred. <laughs> so anyway, let's go down and take a look at the mound. So now all the soil's out, you get a good idea of how big this mound is gonna be. Now, the good thing is, of course, be the earth, like I can kind of walk on it and it will kind of sink down so much lower. But yeah, and that looks okay, actually. That's not, when I say bad, it's kind of the amount of space it's gonna be taken up. But as it happens, it's not too bad at all, in fact, it's a lot smaller than what I thought it was going to be. Day three, and it's all about the foundations. So today's primary objective was to get all the concrete down. And that was a case of knocking it up, up there, and then getting it down here. And I'm not kidding folks, it was like something like an assault course that they had to create for it and just getting it all laid. So if I come around here, if under here, you'll see an area of all the concrete there and underneath. So you got the, it's 30 centimeters across, 60 centimeters deep, and there was a lot of ballast gone into that as well, which is pretty funky. So the reason it's all protected at the moment like this is because it's due to rain tonight. Uh, which is a bit of a pain but it's only meant to be light showers if it does rain so that's no big deal and we'll kind of take all that off tomorrow and see how it looks but when they were knocking it up it was a bit like an assault course because they were knocking it up here and then they were carrying it down here bringing it across and then laying it all in here but when we got around to doing this side that was a different kettle of fish altogether so what they did was they got this eight by four board laid it on here put some corex on it which made it very slippery and then simply slid down all the concrete down here and as odd as that may have sounded 
it actually proved to be really effective. Day four, the week's nearly up. The day started off terrible weather, it was absolutely pouring down, cats and dogs, but it came good in the end. So for the first few hours today, whilst the bricks were being laid, it was just pouring down with rain. It really was non-stop. But as the day kind of wore on, the weather got better. And it came good in the end. It came good at just the right time in all honesty. So along here, you can see two courses of engineering bricks. And just here, like it says on the tin, these are air bricks. And what they do, they just allow the air to circulate around the base. And it kind of keeps it fresh and stops wood rotting and things like that. And then talking of rotting, over here, this is the membrane, this is down as well. And what that does, it just stops anything underneath it, anything kind of green like grass or shrubbery or whatever, uh, growing up through it. And the shingle here, it's just here, just to hold it down for years to come. And all the grass that was in here, this kind of middle section, has been taken away and has been put down in the mound. Well, take a look at that in just a moment. So just round here, just spotted there. There we go. It's a downpipe. You might be thinking, I wonder if they put a downpipe in there for, because I'm not, I'm not fitting, fitting any sinks or any toilets to it or anything like that. Um, but that's actually just a pipe to allow the electricity into the, uh, into the cabin. And that electricity will be coming down the side of the house, down the garage, along the garden, down here, across this wall here, and then there'll be a path dug on the ground that will go straight into that downpipe and then into the cabin. And as well as the top layer of that grass that was removed today, we kind of cut back along here as well and took out just a section of it. Because what you don't want uh, is kind of earth just laying up against the cabin itself. You, again, you need that airflow in there so it doesn't kind of butt up right against it. Uh, and again, that just allows for circulation and, and just decreasing uh, the chances of actually getting any damp into the building, but that's pretty well protected. So that earth there and all the remaining kind of top layer of grass that was there was taken down to the mound. Let's take a little look at that then, shall we? This is kind of like the mound update on day four, and this is pretty much it for, for the mound. This is as big as it's going to get. In fact, if anything, uh, it might get a little bit smaller because I'll probably just walk up and down on it. Uh, just to kind of settle it down a lot more and I've probably got a few flint stones to take out of there As you can see guys have done a really good job of that. That's not even as big as I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be absolutely ginormous. I mean look at that, look at that for a big piece of flint <laughs> It's massive <laughs> It's really really big, but I'm going to collect some of that up and maybe use it for some sort of garden decoration or something like that So all that earth that was taken down 
to the bottom of the garden wasn't actually the only thing that was taken down there today. All the wood from the delivery was taken there as well. But let's just have a look and see how much of that wood is still in the front. Yep, that's all the frame wood taken down. All you got now is there's a load of eight by four that's got to go. But that'll go down probably next week sometime. Anyway, let's go and see where they put it. So what have we got here? So here, this wood here, this is the, uh, I don't know, maybe, I think that's uh, four by two. That's gonna be used for the actual framework itself, most of the framework. And this wider wood here, this is gonna act like a lintel. And this is gonna go above the doors and the doors are three meters wide, uh, which means just over here, it will take up most of the frontage actually, which is kind of what I want because there's no windows in here or anything like that. And so if you can imagine kind of a meter in and then a meter in, and that is gonna be the width of the door. Now, hopefully the mic's picking this up. But whilst I've been doing a little bit of vlogging, I just noticed that there's a deer behind the actual wooden frames. And I'm hoping I'll be able to get him on camera for you. I mean, literally, I was about 20 feet away from him. And because he had the wood panels either side of us, he didn't know I was even there. I mean, how he didn't hear me, I don't know. There we go, he's over there. Yeah, man, they literally bark. Yeah, so if anyone's ever kind of been out in the garden or whatever and sort of thought, God, I wish that dog would be quiet. Chances are, it'd be a deer. <laughs> that was so cool. I was not expecting to see a deer. I was hopeful. Uh, that I'd get some deer come up. <clears throat> but to actually get it on film as well, that's a bit special that was. So this here, something I've really noticed, uh, it's, now it's kind of not grass anymore and it, you know it's proper building materials. I'm really getting a sense of how big this actually is. So recently when I was deciding how big this needed to be, I was kind of thinking to myself, mm, maybe I should have done it a little bit bigger. Certainly a few days ago I was considering that because, I don't know, it was, it, I think when the grass was still down and it was just kind of pegged out as to where everything was going to be, it just seemed a bit small to me, but seeing it like this, I don't know, it feels a lot bigger. I mean, I'll soon fill it up, especially with a, a, a couple of tables just here for uh, Lagondon and then over here this part of the cabin there is where I'll probably do some live streaming from uh, and if I can I'll put some sort of I don't know uh, I would say comfy chair or something like that but I'm kind of thinking of a, just something to sort of chill out with or something like that because I've always just wanted to do a, a streams where I'm just at a coffee table or something like that and I'm just sort of sitting and talking and chatting and I don't know this it, it's a bit like how Sarah Starbricks and um, Brick Hive that's how they used to, they first started and I I kind of miss those streams because I liked them they were just something a bit authentic about it but I don't know maybe this room isn't the most authentic room uh, to have because I mean it's, it's, it's quite a luxury. I mean, I'm pretty down to earth on these sort of things, but you know, this was either going to be a new car or it was going to be a Lego room. And, uh, and I don't know about you lot, but I'd much rather be spending my money on Lego any day. I'm forever blowing bubbles, bubbles pretty bubbles in pretty the air. Pretty bubbles in the air. 
They fly so high, they reach the sky. Hey, everyone, this is where I come in the morning to get my coffee for this uh, young gentleman here <laughs> when he's not blowing bubbles. And this is Bob, who, by the way, makes the best coffee in all of London. He really does. And on that note, cheers. Now, I don't know about you lot out there, but normally speaking, when I catch an Uber, it's normally a Prius or, you know, some other green, environmentally friendly car. Never seen one of these though. An Uber boat. I wonder if I can use them on the app. Oh, that's so much better. So, it's Friday, day five. It's a bit of an overcast day again in London. But I'm not gonna be with the boys today. Back in the office. So I'm looking forward to tonight getting home, seeing what they've done, and catching nothing calling. Houston, we have liftoff. Well, I suppose the first place to start is with, with the actual base itself. So you've got these, let's come down here. I've got this here, this is a six by two. Uh, now it's in inches, I'm not really sure why this is. Maybe someone can let me know uh, in the comments below. Uh, for some reason, when it comes to wood and building materials, quite often uh, we, 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 we seem to forget that we're a country uh, with decibel and we go to Imperial for some reason, sort of like old money. Uh, it's strange, but where should we go? I'll tell you what we do. Instead of going on the outside, let's jump in, shall we? Here we go. All right, just got to watch. Right there. Start over there. Let's go over here as well. This is quite funky. All right, so how is this? How does this work? Well, we've got the, like I say, the 6B2 going all the way around it. Well, there we go. There we've got some some workings out there from the carpenter. And then that's used for effect as well for these joists uh, that run across uh, the base as well. And then you've got these sections here, these strengthening parts, and then roughly 40 centimeters apart. And that kind of helps strengthen it, certainly along the middle section. And then I can show you how it's bolted down. So here we go, there's the bolt. That's kind of uh, drilled into the foundations and then what they do is screw it down and that there you just make this out here it's like a resin and that sets absolutely solid we will be able to move that there we go <laughs> the test of it there you can't move it at all and then they're placed around various parts of the base one there one there it's bound to be one there and i'm guessing one there as well there it is and that is how the base is bolted to the foundations. Moving away from the inside then, let's take a look at the outside. So we've got, we've got three walls up here, the left side, you know, the, uh, the back wall, and the right side over there. So this is made up using uh, four by two, and I'm not really sure why, but it kind of is doubled up on each of the corners. There you go, let's go around to this one as well. And on these ones at the front, there's this gap here as well. Again, I'm not really sure why. I'll find out and let you know in the next video. Let's go around to here. I'm sure someone like Tech from Tech Productions will be able to tell me because obviously he's a carpenter as well. And there we go, and it kind of goes down like that. And we've got this, this gap there. And then eventually when the doors arrive, and I think they're actually running a little bit late on the doors, and they're apparently not due to around uh, June the 3rd or something like that. So fingers crossed they come a little bit before then because I mean, really looking at all this, the guys seem to be a little bit ahead of schedule if you ask me. And they'll kind of rest on this. There'll be some sort of plinth made up uh, and they'll rest on that. But anyway, let's go back to that four by two. Go over here. So there we go, it's doubled up again on this side. And it's all absolutely dead square. If I come up here on the mound, You'll see it's kind of all kind of held together using these battens here. And they're just two inches by, well, 
one inch I guess that is that's all it needs to be and there's kind of screwed into place and that helps keep everything nice and square and then where you've got a little bit of overlap here you can see there the, the joints are made up and then the same goes for down here as well and then going in between the joists and in between the frames as well there's going to be uh, insulation and it's going to be kind of like a hard insulation as well and then to keep it warmer in there as well we'll have uh, insulation at the roof area and I guess that's what's going to be happening next week this is all going to be boarded up uh, we're going to have insulation fitted into the roof insulation fitted in the flooring and insulation fitted around the doors but like I say the doors proving to be a little bit of a problem at the moment because they're not due to around June time which means it could potentially kind of delay things a little bit maybe by a week or two or something like that uh, while that's going on I suppose but the inside of it can still be plastered and the electricians will still be able to do what they need to do we just need to kind of make sure that it's watertight or maybe lay some tarpaulin over it or something like that but over here at the front here there will be an overhang as well from the roof so the roof will, will kind of overhang by a couple of inches I guess and run along here obviously and then come out probably to around where that batten finishes just there and that's basically if it's raining and let's face it folks it rains all the time here I can't believe it's actually sunny at the moment this is really bizarre weather uh, at least if it's <laughs> if it is raining and you've got that little bit of cover like I say about half a meters worth it will kind of keep the rain off you as you kind of coming in and out of the door and it will be nice even if it is raining because it you know potentially could get quite warm in there especially with all the lighting if I'm streaming or if I'm just generally just creating a Lego video uh, it'd be nice to open up the sliding doors and get some fresh air So day five then, and the guys are absolutely smashing it. In fact, if anything, they're getting ahead of schedule, which is brilliant. Now, the sun's gone in, and I can hear thunder and lightning a couple of miles away. So that's probably my cue to get in as well, have a spot of supper, and get ready for London's calling. <laughs> 